Every hockey player should be able to do this. As you look at me and say, what the hell does this have to do with hockey? Let me tell you. More ability, especially in your lower and upper back, has never in history been shown to be a bad thing. For the players with very specific back issues, I encourage you to work towards an ability similar to this. To do that, you would need to marry two concepts between training the low back, but also training the mid back and upper back. For some quick nuance, you would have to work on the bridge itself in order to get better at that bridge because even your classic rotator cuff presses and pulls and low back work will not fully address every area of the back bridge itself but it will get you very 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 close to it so before you ask no this isn't what you would call unnecessary exercise for hockey players but it is very 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 nice to have i no longer get sore in my upper back and my lower back and this ends up being such a great stretch for me when i couldn't do this before take a look at my progress from a few years ago to now my friends at atg have some protocols that could help you out with this ability. I've also worked with mobility and muscle for direct bridge work. Once again, this has worked out so well for me that any back tweaks that I get have to be contact. I get slammed against the bus. I fall off a skyscraper. I no longer pull any muscles or break my back just from moving the wrong way. And if you're in this position, I hope this helps you out. All right, so welcome back to my garage. Don't worry, I'm not gonna tie Lopez, you guys, and say it's like, you gotta know the knowledge here, even though I am giving away free education. But uh, back bridge. Um, and by the way, I finally got this fixed. Equipment's inside. I don't have to worry about any snow or rain rusting this up anymore. I had a giant hole in my roof and it was seeping in water like crazy and took way too long to fix when you have bad construction companies that's usually why it takes as long as it did for for, for that and uh, that was not good of course but I found some new guys they were great and they got it done within two days could have done it in one day I really appreciate them if you want to train with me in person uh, please send me an email or a text uh, through whatsapp telegram and uh, Gmail. Use those avenues or you can DM me directly on Instagram. I wish I could talk to you guys through YouTube. It just wouldn't let me. There's no avenue to directly message uh, anyone who comments or any of my subscribers for, for that matter, which is a downside of YouTube. But at the same time, you get to see these long form unscripted discussions, which I uh, I found to be very beneficial for me to just go with the flow. And I think it's it's made me feel a lot more authentic to the subjects at hand and helped me get my point across as if I were coaching everyone in person. And it kind of mimics that same situation in a way. Um, anyway, before I ramble on too much, because that isn't the point, it is about doing the back bridge. So I have that as a standard in the standards course with Hockey X standards. And reason for that is I think this is something every hockey player should at least have the ability to work towards or if they were to do it as like a, a party trick, that would be the option too. It's the same thing with the KOT squat or the reverse Nordic. Those are more like party tricks, but they happen to be a uh, um, an after effect of your work with all of this long range, short range, training through a stretch position, getting stronger out of that. In addition to just getting plain stronger all around too, that's, that's also a plus. The back bridge is just a... Uh, another part of that, my flexibility with that specifically has improved dramatically, not just within the past six months, but within the past two years, ever since I first tried it. And the, the, the cool thing is with things like uh, ATG is that the exercises that they have, the exercise selection, and even the programming that they have and the range of motion that they tell you to go through basically have this be not like full fledged bridge, like a full perfect bridge that you would have in calisthenics or gymnastics or, you know, other, other things like that. But but it gets really, really, really close without even working on it to begin with. So Ben's able to just jump into a back bridge whenever he wants. And Alyssa is kind of the same thing. Now, Ben's shoulders are uh, a little stiffer than maybe like uh, an Alyssa's or a uh, Derek Scott, uh, who's the guy who runs mobility and muscle. Because what they'll what they'll have, and this is also something I'm working on. So it's not it's not just a problem with Ben. What, uh, what Ben had is, or has as well, is that in his bridge, his... 
head doesn't completely go in line with his wrists and, and all that. Still very good mobility for someone who doesn't work on bridges, mind you. And that's kind of like the point, uh, once again, to circle back to the beginning. You want to be able to have an ability similar to this without even having to work on it to begin with. It's a sign of back ability, where it's the, it's the upper back, lower back, and also just the, the all-around anterior chain being stretched out because you, you don't have just the strength of the back. Why don't I demo it quick? You don't just have the strength of the back and shoulders to, to hold you up here. This is really stretching out the entire anterior chain. So let's say like your hip flexors are super stiff that you can't extend your hips up at the top. That's not gonna work. But then you go up a chain if your low back is weak and gets really tight, you're probably gonna be like, ah, seized up right here, that's not good. But uh, once you do get those things loosened up, which I'll explain in the video, then you have something that results very similarly to this bridge right here. So how do you get to that point? Well, you have to definitely train the upper body. And uh, this is an exercise I haven't talked about in, uh, and I probably should have talked about in the rotator cuff video with St. Louis, which you can find on my channel. This is called a pullover. There's many variations to this. And basically what happens here is that you go across a bench or what you have with HG right here with this back bench, which is a very unique design based off of <coughs> older uh i think it was arnold who was using it with all of his bodybuilding buddies basically they had this type of bench to do bent arm pullovers which is pretty similar to what uh, uh what this is but the difference here is that we use straight arms in order to get more mobility and then you use bent arms to get more strength and that's kind of like the primary difference between the two but the point of that is it gets your shoulders and your spine and your basically your entire upper body into that specific stretch then you're lifting the weight out of it provided you reach a certain standard so that would this is 50 pounds that's about 25 percent of my body weight i can do same straight arm pullover for about six to eight reps with 70 pounds which you do the math on that and this does is depending on how much stretch you get you and most commonly you see this across the bench if you do it across the bench that's going to get you the most stretch i think this kind of cuts at least it cuts me off. There's probably ways to manipulate it too, but you can use other things like a barbell with it. Range of strength is on that. Um, but you can, the, the, what this does really stretches out the shoulders, stretches out the lats, basically gets you into that same exact bridge position. If your core is tight, your, 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 your chest and everything like that, you're going to feel it stretch out here too. And it gets your entire upper body into that pulled over position that you would be in, say, if you were in a bridge. And that is a very key thing behind this. The cool thing with the pullover is that it's also going to strengthen your lats, which is going to help with your throws, uh, say if you're in a throwing sport, but for a hockey perspective, that will still help out your shot speed as well. So really the stronger you get at this, pull-ups are going to be easier, presses are going to be easier. You're just going to feel a lot better. You're not going to be stuck down here. You're going to be stretched out into this position. You're going to be able to go in and out of ranges. And that's the entire point of training this in addition to something else like Jefferson Curl, which they actually complement each other very well. For the low back work, you do need that. I've gone in way more detail into the low back in many other videos. I'll give a basic synopsis here. You want to be able to round the back in order to strengthen the back. You can either do that with back extension, say if you're having a lot of trouble, that's as a starting point, you would need to also train the hip flexors to get and the, the, the front side of core, as you could call it. I don't really like to use that term. You would also need to use the QL raises going side to side. That's kind of like breaking it down into three components to really simplify it. You would need to also train the back in extension and flexion. So Jefferson curl right here or a pike right here would train spinal flexion. It is okay to round the back provided you go into the range that is most comfortable and that your tissue can tolerate and that your body can tolerate without pain. You want to be able to go any range whatsoever without pain. That's the key point there. Do not work through pain, but you also want to be able to extend the spine, whether that's with a conventional deadlift, RDL, see the good morning, standing good morning, any type of good morning, any type of deadlift. And that is going to help you strengthen the tissue around your back so that eventually you can tolerate awkward positions that you would get into, such as bingo, bango, bongo, the back bridge. And that is really the point behind doing it as a hockey player. I know a lot of hockey players who have tight backs, tight shoulders. 
I work with some of them too. And I don't have that problem anymore. For my shoulders, I used to sleep on the wrong side of the bed and I had like a, a weird hit that it screwed, grade one strained my AC joint at some point and it recovered on its own very quickly. I didn't do any like rehab for it actually. Uh, I probably should have then. And then for my back, that coincided with my hip injuries and I never had a back specific injury, but the longer I had my ice sessions, when I was doing like all those six hour ice sessions, the more and more quickly my low back would fatigue. I never trained it. I actually lifting weights for a good period if um, you guys have followed me for a while, but those introducing uh, you to me for the first time, I, there was a period of time where I actually didn't lift any weights, just focused on training hockey. Probably was a mistake, but I thought that lifting weights at the time would actually impede my progress with my hockey. Turns out I was completely wrong and I was just lifting weights the wrong way, not doing an ATG style, not training through a long and short range of motion, not understanding the concepts behind that, not understanding the specific strength curves. That could be like top quarter, bottom quarter, uh, 90 degree with a squat for instance, but that also applies to like a, a low back where you have the different strength curves there. Uh, you also have your rotator cuff, like remedial exercises like that, uh, your shoulder. Now now that I know all of this, I would have been like, okay, then you 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 really should lift weights um, because that is one of the better ways to uh, you should sorry you should lift weights with these concepts in mind of lifting through range of motion, not working through pain, um, training both the front and the backside because neurologically and physically that gets you stronger and and reframing the work in the gym as ability training. That's why my parent company is called that because it, this is this is really. Uh, what it is. Weightlifting is something that is traditionally very intimidating. And for some people also, I was in this position, I thought it was stupid at some point, which is what I just described. And now I don't think it's stupid anymore. Now I think it's God's work. And it's really helped me the, the way that I've lifted weights. I should say once again is is the thing that's helped me this is kind of like the method that i described briefly something like bridge specifically so i'm very glad that i have that ability it's a not just a party trick or something that i uh show off and i no longer tweak my back anymore i i basically have to fall off a skyscraper or get hit by a bus or anything else that I don't want to say happening to me or happening to anyone else for that matter. Anything horrific like that, um, because we don't want to manifest it. But y the point is, I don't get back injuries anymore from just moving around because I've trained the ability to move around. I've trained my movement and my function in every pattern that I, I, I go through. And that's the point of doing something like the back bridge as a hockey player. Um, if you have questions, please let me know about that. There's more details about all the services that I offer from Standard School, HEG Hockey, and 101 Custom Coaching, which I still have spots available for. Prices have increased as I've accrued more clients, but you can still hop in to that and see the details on either just a program or you get direct form coaching from me. Thanks for watching and please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching today's Hockey Hacks. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to share it with someone who you think could benefit from this. Also check out the Standard School, which is the link below, which details out every standard from skating, shooting, stick handling, strength, speed, etc. And then player specific standards like what McDavid can do, McKinnon, etc. Giving you the direction you need for your hockey training. We also have HG for Hockey on the HG app. You can get half off your first month by clicking the link in the description. And if you would like to apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me directly, which would be the best alternative to seeing me in person, you can do that as well. If you would like to see me in person for hockey training, I currently work out of HKY House in Waterford, Michigan. And if you would like in-person gym training or shooting training, I have a place for that in Westland, Michigan. Thanks again for watching and please let me know if you have any questions.